The DEF CON is cancelled meme actually comes true, a Thunderbolt flaw hits pre-2019 PCs, and Zoom acquires Keybase. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris and this is ThreatWire for May 12th, 2020. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. On to the news. Folks, this is not a troll and it is not a lie, but after years and years of memes telling people that DEF CON would be canceled each and every year, due to the current situation, the giant hacker summer camp con is entering safe mode this year in August. While this probably comes as no surprise to most folks out there, given that every event for this year has either been pushed back, canceled completely, or moved to a digital live stream, this news came as kind of a hard pill to swallow for many longtime DEF CON attendees, including myself. DEF CON is the biggest hacker convention in the US, estimating around 20 to 25,000 attendees each year, and it takes place in Las Vegas every August. The event and its sister convention, which is called Black Hat, have been a tradition for the Hack5 team since the late 2010s, where some of the biggest privacy and security news is published as talks, villages, and even panels. The event has been lovingly nicknamed Hacker Summer Camp because of its rich ability to make anyone feel welcome and have a place in the ever-evolving world of hacking. I love going because I get to meet so many of you in person, face to face, and putting names to handles online and knowing how much this channel has influenced so many folks' careers, that's a big motivator for me. Now for the first time ever, DEF CON will be moving to an online event. This means that challenges, talks, villages, contests, CTFs, movie nights, drink ups, and a lot more will be planned and coordinated through the DEF CON forums. Black Hat will also be moving to a virtual conference as well. Now for the safety of all involved, I think that this was the right move. It is totally sad and we will miss the opportunity to do meet and greets to see so many of you, but I am glad that Dark Tangent and the rest of the DEF CON team decided to go digital. DEF CON 29 is still full steam ahead for August of 2021, and as long as there's a DEF CON happening in Vegas, I can assure you I will be there. I hope to see everyone on the forums and taking place in their online events until next year at DEF CON 29. I hope everybody stays safe as well. Shout out to Joel on the ThreatWire Patreon for sharing this story. Some big news surfaced yesterday in regards to Thunderbolt security. A researcher from Eindhoven University of Technology, sorry if I incorrectly said that, discovered a vulnerability within Thunderbolt ports that could allow an attacker with physical access to read and copy data even if the drive is encrypted and the computer is locked or asleep. They dubbed it Thunder Spy, and it requires no interaction from the user, and it leaves no traces after the attack has commenced. According to a published site dedicated to the vulnerabilities, this attack would take about five minutes to occur on Windows or Linux environments. An attacker can use simple off-the-shelf components, costing a few hundred dollars to take advantage of these issues. To demo this attack, the researcher uses a Lenovo ThinkPad laptop, showing that it's running Windows 10, but it's locked. They remove the backplate to the laptop, they clip components to the interior of the Thunderbolt 3 port, and they connect this to their attacker PC to run a payload. This payload disables the security implemented on the victim's machine, and it logs in as if they already had the password. It's basically an evil made attack, allowing an attacker to steal data even when a system is locked. While it does require quite a bit of physical access, like most likely requiring an attacker to remove the whole backplate, it leaves no trace because it requires no network activity. So why does this occur? Well, Intel's Thunderbolt technology uses direct access to a machine's memory for faster transfer speeds. They work at a low level, but with high privileged access. So connected peripherals bypass OS security and policies and directly read and write to the memory. Direct memory access, or DMA for short, are attacks that take advantage of this, and seven total vulnerabilities allow for ThunderSpy to occur. Now these include inadequate firmware verification verification schemes, no Thunderbolt security of boot camp, unauthenticated device metadata, and a lot more. 
Intel responded to this flaw saying that the underlying vulnerability is not anything new and was actually addressed in OS releases last year, called the Kernel Direct Memory Access Protection. But if those mitigations are not enabled, or if a device is not newer than a computer made in 2019, the new ThunderSpy physical attack vector works. This mitigation was enabled in Windows 10 1803 RS4 and later, Linux Kernel 5 and later, and Mac OS 10.12.4 in later versions. Intel also noted that this attack was not demonstrated on systems with the kernel direct memory access protections enabled, which would be machines made within the last year or so. Unfortunately, not all machines have kernel DMA protection even if they are newer, so the researcher has released a tool on their website which is called SpyCheck to verify if your machine is vulnerable and whether or not you can enable kernel DMA protections. The researcher suggests disabling Thunderbolt ports in the BIOS, enabling hard drive encryption, and turning off the computer whenever it's unattended to mitigate the problem. Another mitigation is to enable security levels, which can disallow untrusted devices, and do not allow folks to just borrow your Thunderbolt devices or peripherals. Also, just don't leave them unattended. The device used in the demo is pretty obvious, and it would likely not be used in a public setting like a hotel lobby or a coffee house, but evil-made attacks could take place on unattended machines in hotel rooms or private offices, and an entity with funding could potentially turn this attack into a very small device with some manufacturing. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my supporters over at patreon.com slash Threatwire. My Hush Puppy Perk level patrons are also so awesome for sending in their fur baby photos every single week. I love them. Keep them coming. They're adorable. And if you want to support Threatwire, but you don't want to be a Patreon supporter, check out snubsy.com slash shop where you can get a Threatwire t-shirt, Threatwire stickers, and even my own digital photography, all of which supports the shows. Oh, Zoom. I probably don't need to mention all of the security and privacy stories that we've posted about in the past two months, but the company is now trying to combat some of that bad press by acquiring Keybase, an encryption and PGP social platform that even we have done tutorials and reviews on as a part of Zoom's 90-day plan to strengthen their security measures. Yay! Keybase is well known for their easy to use and friendly browser UI for collaboration and file sharing, as well as their command line options for encrypted messaging, as well as their UI for encrypted messaging platforms. Now, Zoom published a blog post about the acquisition on May 7th, and while not going into exact details on what this entails, they did explain that Keybase's team will be integrated into the Zoom family to help build end-to-end -end encryption that can reach current Zoom scalability. Zoom's goal with this new purchase is to create a truly private video communications platform that can scale to hundreds of millions of participants and also be flexible with Zoom's features. They also want to prevent harmful behavior and balance the needs of users. Now, end-to-end -end encryption will be a feature for paid accounts and logged-in users will generate public cryptographic identities that are stored on a repo on Zoom's network. These can be used to establish a trusted relationship and connection between attendees of video meetings with an ephemeral per meeting symmetric key to be generated by the host. According to the blog post, the key will be enveloped within an asymmetric key pair and rotated with the host having control and the host client software will choose which devices get meeting keys. Keybase's future as a standalone product is yet to be determined. Unfortunately, Keybase itself has had a large spam problem on their own encrypted messaging platform as recently as late 2019 and early 2020, so only time and security audits, to be honest, will tell if this is a fruitful acquisition as Zoom is hoping for. Now, before I leave, I would like to say thank you so much to Eric and Stu, who joined the Patreon team this week. Thank you to both of you. You are totally awesome. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe to this channel. We have some pretty interesting announcements coming up from Hack5. I'm Shannon Morris, and I will see you on the internet.